sheep, says the Lord, and I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them. And I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So today we celebrate this feast day of St. Robert Bellarmine. You might say, well, who's that guy? So he was someone who was a teacher. He uh, became a cardinal. He was someone that really worked in a special way for the poor. Um, he even took in his own in his own home different um, draperies that were there that were put there that were very expensive, and he he took them down and he he gave them to the poor. And people were like, "Why are you you know getting rid of these things?" He's like, "Well, walls don't catch cold, but the poor do." And so he was willing to even just give his own furniture away in order to make sure that they were taken care of during times of sickness. Um, something that's really interesting about St. Robert Bellarmine is most altars, not all, but most altars in Catholic churches have a relic within them. And this relic, you can't really see it that much, but it's right here. And that's why whenever I come and I go like this, I'm kissing the altar, which is a symbol of Christ. So it's greeting the Lord, saying, it's good, it's good to be here with you, Lord. But there's also the relic of a saint that's here, that I'm saying, St. Robert of Bellarmine, St. Charles Borromeo, are two saints whose relics are here. You might say, well, okay, well, what's a relic? Well, remember, there's first-class relic, second-class relic, third-class relic. Third-class relic is something like cloth or a holy card or a rosary that has touched um, the body of a saint. And then it becomes a third class relic. Um, one of my uh, priests in the Marians, Father Seraphim, he actually met Padre Pio, Saint Padre Pio. And he came over and he said, can I have a blessing? And Padre Pio was kind of a funny guy. So he's like, you wanted a blessing. So he like takes his hand, he like kind of like slaps him on the head a couple times. He's like, I gave you the blessing. So Padre Pio is a saint. And he touched Father Seraphim's head. So in a certain sense, Father Seraphim's head is a third class relic. If you have if you have um, a rosary, and maybe you put it maybe next to there was that time several years ago we went to see the relics of St. Maria Veretti. But when the relics came here and people were taking rosaries and putting it or, or, or a miraculous medal, those are third-class relics. Second-class relic is something that the saint actually owned. So in Darien, there is a St. Therese shrine. And there, there's actually her little tambourine and her little bouncy ball when she was like three or five years old that she used to play with. Those are second-class relics, and there's a little chair that she would sit on. First-class relics is actually a part of the saint themselves, so it might be part of their hair. It could be part of their bone. It could be part of them in that way, and so this is actually a first-class relic, so there's a part of St. Robert Bellarmine right here in our church, and we might say, well, that's kind of weird. But you know what's really cool about being Catholic is we sort of have everything. We have the best of art, we have the best of music, but we also have really weird, cool things as well. Like in a couple days, you won't be here for the Mass, but there's a saint, St. Januarius. And guess what happens on his particular feast day? On his particular feast day, there's a relic of his blood. They actually have his blood in a little container, and it actually liquefies mysteriously. Imagine that. I mean, isn't that weird? But that's the amazing thing that God sometimes gives us these sort of weird things to also perk our interest, to be like, wow, there seems to be more than just what I can see. There's a little more mystery to our world. And so the relics of saints, why we venerate relics, why we have these relics that are the bones of saints um, actually comes from the time of great persecution, a time in which the church had to celebrate Mass in hiding, and they actually had to celebrate Mass underground in the catacombs, 
and in areas where they were tombs, underground tombs. And so there would be the bodies of different saints who gave their lives for the gospel. And guess where they would celebrate Mass? They would actually celebrate Mass right over the body of that saint, over that tomb. And so they remembered that the body of a saint and our bodies are not merely things that we just kind of throw away once we die. It's not like, well, I won't see that again. But that body is always connected to us. And so the saints who are in heaven awaiting for the resurrection of their body, when we venerate their bodies here, it's a very, very real way of being very, very close to our saints, our special big brothers and sisters who are in heaven helping us. So that's why we have relics. They're, it's kind of weird, but it's kind of awesome at the same time that we are able to be so close to the saints that are in heaven, that are not just way up there, but they're actually really, really with us um, in a way when one of their relics is with us. So that's a little bit of teaching on relics. And every time you see me kiss this area right here, I'm actually praying to St. Robert Bellarmine, St. Charles Borromeo, whose bones are actually right Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the Bishop St. Robert Bellarmine with wonderful learning and virtue to vindicate the faith of your Church, grant through his intercession that in the integrity of that same faith your people may always find joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received, and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Sipa, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them. Not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You are my God, and I give thanks.
this to you. Oh my God, I have stolen. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee, bringing an alabaster flask of ointment. He stood she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his tears, his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with her hair, kissed them anointed them with oil, anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days' wages, and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, The one, I suppose, whose debt, larger debt, was forgiven. He said to him, You have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one who had, to whom little is forgiven, loves little. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, but there's a, there's a beautiful song in there of God help the outcasts. And really, that's what the gospel is speaking about today. God loves in a backward sort of way. We would think that he would love those who have everything together, who always there on time, always, you know, you know are in a sense the perfect student in a sense. And yet, there's this mysterious way in which God seems to love, in a very special way, the guy who's always missing it. The guy who's always late. The guy who just doesn't have his act together. There's this special love that the Lord has for Paul. You know, sometimes we think about Paul and we think about, well, you know, he had everything together. He was a saint. He, 
did all these things, he wrote all these different letters. But St. Paul talks about here saying, the Lord was raised, he appeared to, to Peter, to Cephas, to James, all these people who were with him in the beginning. And then it says, last of all, he appeared to me, and he says, as one born abnormally, he says, I'm the least of the apostles. I'm not even fit to be called an apostle. Because remember that Paul actually fought against the Lord. He was what you call the Terminator of Christians. You know the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, he was like the Terminator of the Christians. His whole job, when he was a Pharisee, before he became a Christian, was to hunt down and destroy Christians. He was like Darth Vader hunt down and destroy the Jedi. That was his job, and he was very successful. He would find the Christians, he would drag them out away from their families, and he would throw them into prison. Remember, he's the one that helped all the people get riled up to stone St. Stephen. It says in the Bible that all the people that were killing Stephen, they took their coats off, and they put them at the feet of a young man named Saul. That was a sign of he was like the leader of that whole thing. He was like the gang leader in a sense, as they were beating up and, and, and killing St. Stephen. So he definitely didn't get it in the beginning. And yet, we know the story that he was on his way actually to hunt more Christians, and then the Lord just knocked him down and said, why are you persecuting me? And there was this experience where the Lord, the Lord mysteriously came into St. Paul and he recognized that the Lord was actually living inside of his heart. And he was like, wow, I've been hunting the wrong people because I've been persecuting the very God that I wanted to follow, but I was going in the wrong way. And so God never gave up on St. Paul and actually saw that even though he was fallen away, He's like, I can still use him. I can still use him to help people come to know the Lord. And then we have the story here of this sinful woman of the city. When we say that sinful woman, it literally means like a woman of the night. Like not a person that you would want to hang out with. Someone who's around the shady places, someone who's doing shady things, someone who's just not living a very, very good life. And yet, she goes, she barges into this person's house, this Pharisee who seems to have everything together. She just barges in. She takes this oil that's worth an entire year's salary. So imagine, like, your parents working for an entire year, and they save all of that up. And it's worth that bottle. And she just breaks the bottle open, and she just dumps it on the feet of Jesus. She starts crying. Her tears become like a shower for the Lord's feet. She takes her hair and goes like that. I mean, it's probably a pretty wild scene. Imagine if you were there and this woman that you're like, wow, I know what this person's about. This person, you know, is doing drugs. This person is hanging out with the wrong guys. You know, all these different things. And she just barges into your house with your special guest Jesus there, she breaks open this, this bottle, and then she like takes her hair and like starts going like that, and you're probably like, get out of here. Like, what are you doing here? And yet, what does the Lord say? She's the one who's loving much. Yeah, she didn't have things to gather. Yeah, she's a mess. But do you see how her heart is so open because she knows that she's broken? She's coming to me saying, Jesus, I can't take care of myself. You can take care of me. You are my Savior. Versus the Pharisee who said, I have everything together, so much so that I don't really even need to take care of Jesus. Do you remember how Jesus kind of pointed out saying, you didn't wash my feet? You know, that's kind of a sign of like, imagine you come into someone's house and the person doesn't really greet you. They don't, like, help you with your coat or say, hey, you can put your coat here. They're just kind of like, they just kind of walk by. That would be the same sort of thing. 
Like we don't have now, we don't come to people's houses and they don't wash our feet right there. But in this time, that's kind of what it would be like. It would be like someone just walking by and you're like, okay, where do I put my coat? This is really awkward. And then you did not give me a kiss. It would be like, you know, you come in and the person doesn't give you a hug. The person doesn't say, hey, how are you doing? They just kind of stare at you. And you kind of just stare at them back and you're like, um, hi. So this Pharisee didn't follow even the normal ways of saying, you're welcome, Jesus. Probably because he didn't really think that he really needed Jesus. And maybe he was using Jesus to say, hey, I have this guy at my house. That must mean that I'm important. Do you see how he didn't really care about Jesus, but he just sort of cared about himself. Whereas this sinful woman doesn't care about herself and doesn't care about the mess that she's making, but she cares about Jesus. That's what we need to remember, is that we need to be careful that we don't look at our heart and say, I have everything together, so much so that Jesus is kind of like a secondary thing. You know, I kind of put my little Jesus bobblehead statue, I, I kind of like put him on the shelf, and then when I'm in real need, then I I'll take him down, and I'll be like, okay, Jesus, I need you. But one of the most dangerous things that can happen in our lives is if we say, I don't really need a savior in my life. In fact, I could be my own savior. Let's always remember our neediness. Let's always remember that we are the sinful woman. We are Saul of Tarsus. And we need to run to the Lord. Because every single one of us has stuff. Every single one of us has some area that we struggle with. Maybe we get mad really easily. Maybe we're, we're, we're tempted really, really easily to take things that don't belong to us. Maybe it's very easy for us to say something unkind, um, even against one of our friends, when we get pressured by someone else and we want to kind of fit in. So all of us have something that we struggle with. And the worst thing for us to do is to kind of say, I don't struggle with that. It doesn't exist. Because if we sort of push it down and we don't give it to the Lord, It'll push back, but it'll push back in an unhealthy way. So take whatever that is, because the Lord's allowing you to go through that to say, you need a Savior, and you need to give that over to me, because only through me will you allow that wound, that struggle, that fear, whatever that is, to be transformed into humility, into kindness, and into a generous love, just like the sinful woman had. So now let us stand and bring our petitions before the Lord. We pray for the church. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, lead all lost sheep back to the fold. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders across the globe, may their hearts be swayed by God's law to respect life. Let us pray to the Lord. For those whose loved ones have suffered from the effects of the global pandemic, may God console them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. For the students in our faith community, may the Holy Spirit enlighten them in truth and give them joy in their studies. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have recently died, May they enjoy eternal life through the mercy of our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pray for each of us, especially for any of us who have lost loved ones or, or lost pets as well. Just that, that grieving that happens within our heart, that we might be able to give that over to the Lord, and that we might be able to experience His deep love for us as we hurt in the midst of those losses. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray that our own hearts might recognize our need for Jesus to be in our life.
and that we might be able to recognize our own weaknesses, to give them over to the Lord, that he might transform them into vessels of compassion and mercy for others. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all the intentions within our Lady's intercessory box. We pray especially for the repose of the soul of Ray Wilmington, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of Blessed Saint Robert Bellum, that bestowing on us your pardon, our relations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Maybe if, if you are able to kneel, um, even though we can't use the kneelers, sometimes that helps to just be able to enter more into this time of the Eucharist. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Some 
their way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
blessed is that servant whom the Lord finds awake when he comes and knocks at the gate.
imbued by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of blessed Saint Robert Bellarmine, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you can we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And for all of our students and teachers, we pray. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come.